How is life after the Oval Office? For Barack Obama, it's less yes we can. Yes we can. And more, yes we can afford that. Gone are the days of budgeting for national crises. Now it's all about budgeting for those book deals and Netflix shows. And let's be honest, when your memoir sells 890,000 copies in a day, you're not counting pennies. Barack and Michelle, America's beloved power couple, are making the most of their post-presidential life. You might catch Barack kite surfing with Richard Branson because why not trade Air Force One for a surfboard? And Michelle, ever the style icon, isn't just turning heads. She's turning pages of Vogue in her Versace gown worth the coolest $12,000. Now after presidency, Barack's busy raking in the dough with a six-figure pension, his best-selling books, and public speaking gigs that probably pay more than your entire college tuition. And let's not forget the Netflix deal, because who needs the West Wing when you have your own production wing? Barack and Michelle Obama are coming to Netflix. That's right, today Netflix announced a multi-year production deal with the Obamas. With a net worth soaring over you $70 million, it's safe to say their bank account is almost as impressive as their legacy. So how do the Barack Obama spend his days and money? Let's take a look. First, his earning from White House. Flashback to 2008, the Obama step into the White House with a neat $1.3 million in his pocket. Fast forward to today, and his family is sitting pretty on a cool $70 million. How you ask? Let's just say Barack's journey from the US Senate in 2005 to post-presidential life has been less Mr. Smith goes to Washington and more Mr. Obama goes to the bank. From 2005 to 2016, it was raining dollars for the Obamas. We're talking a $20.5 million shower of government salary, book royalties, because who doesn't love a presidential memoir, investment income? And let's not forget Michelle's income from her gig at the University of Chicago hospitals before she took on the role of America's first lady. Barack, while president, wasn't exactly pinching pennies either. He pulled in a six-figure salary, banking $400,000 a year. That's enough to buy 40,000 copies of his own book every year. And even after leaving the Oval Office, he's still cashing in a cool $200,000 annually as a pension. Because once a president, always a president, at least when it comes to the paychecks. Next, we have the MVPs of Obama's life, his books. From 2005 to 2016, Barack was busy not just running the country, but also raking in $15.6 million from his literary masterpieces. The Audacity of Hope, Of Thee I Sing, A Letter to My Daughters, and Dreams from My Father. Talk about a hat-trick of hits. In 2017, Barack and Michelle hit the book deal jackpot, signing on the dotted line for a whopping $60 million. Charging. Michelle's memoir, Becoming, published in 2018, wasn't just a book, it was a cultural phenomenon. It was the literary equivalent of a blockbuster movie selling faster than hotcakes at a church breakfast. How fast, you ask? Try nine copies per second on its first day in North America, according to The Guardian. By July 2022, it had sold over 17 million copies worldwide. If books were Olympic athletes, Becoming would be taking home the gold. Books? Check. What's next for the Obamas? Well, it's just a little thing called Netflix. In 2018, Obama and his wife casually signed a production deal estimated to be around 50 million. Because why stick to just running the country when you can run the streaming world too? This deal includes gems like the documentary Becoming, which is basically the visual cherry on top of Michelle's memoir Sunday. Also, Barack, post-presidency, has become the rock star of the public speaking circuit. Picture this, he walks onto a stage and bam, $400,000 in the bank. In 2017 alone, he reportedly pocketed a cool $1.2 million from just three talks to Wall Street firms. Obama out. Wall Street meets Pennsylvania Avenue, and it pays well. Michelle's not far behind. She reportedly earns $225,000 per speaking gig. Tickets to her 2018 book tour were hotter than concert tickets ranging from $307 to a jaw-dropping $4070 at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Who knew a book tour could feel like a rock concert? And just when you thought they were done, Michelle steps into the podcast arena. In July 2020, she launched the Michelle Obama Podcast on Spotify, diving into the world of interpersonal relationships with the grace of a seasoned media pro. And she's also debuted Michelle Obama, The Light Podcast, 
on Audible. When you tally it all up, the Obamas could be looking at a post-presidential jackpot of $242.5 million. From the White House to Netflix, Wall Street, and the podcast world, the Obamas aren't just living the American dream, they're rewriting it, one lucrative deal at a time. Moving forward, talking about spending his time, post-White House life for the Obama is less commander-in-chief and more. Traveler in luxury. His holiday game is strong, starting with a jaunt to Southern California and then zooming off to Necker Island. Picture Barack Obama, the kite surfer-in-chief, riding the waves with none other than Richard Branson. But why stop there? The Obama then jetted off to the island of Tetiaroa in French Polynesia, checking into The Brando, a luxury resort where a night in a one-bedroom villa costs more than most people's monthly rent. We're talking $3,500 to $4,500 a night. Because when you've lived in the White House, a regular hotel room just doesn't cut it anymore. And who could forget their time on David Geffen's yacht? It was like a who's who of celebrity royalty with Oprah Winfrey, Tom Hanks, and Bruce Springsteen. If that yacht could talk, it would probably write its own best-selling memoir. Then there was that family holiday where they went river rafting in Indonesia, because nothing says family bonding like navigating rapids together. Now you might be wondering how much of their own money the Obamas spend on these lavish getaways. Well, thanks to the General Services Administration, former presidents get a nice travel and business expense fund. So while they're certainly not backpacking on a budget, they might not be dipping too deeply into their own pockets either. Real Estate Investments After bidding adieu to the White House, Barack and Michelle needed a new fortress of solitude. So what did they do? They snagged an 8,200 square feet mansion in Washington for a cool $8.1 million, transforming from renters to owners in the prestigious Calorama neighborhood. Their purchase was only outshined by Jeff Bezos' conversion of a former textile museum into a mansion. But the Obamas also retained their Chicago roots, holding on to their Hyde Park home, purchased in 2005 for $165 million, now worth about $2.5 million. And just when you thought their real estate portfolio couldn't get any fancier, in 2019 they added a Martha's Vineyard estate to their collection, costing $11.75 million. This 6,992 square feet house sits on nearly 12 hectares, offering views that would make even the most seasoned real estate moguls green with envy. The Obama's wardrobe wonders. Presidential perks don't extend to wardrobes, and Michelle Obama's fashion game post-White House has been nothing short of a style roller coaster. From the glitz of Naeem Khan to a $12,000 Versace gown, her wardrobe choices as the First Lady were a blend of high-end splendor and relatable fashion. She's been seen rocking affordable brands like J. Crew, Target, and Converse, proving you can mix presidential poise with high street ease. But it's not all designer labels and gala gowns. Michelle opts for a lunch bag over fancy dining and sweats it out at SoulCycle, where a class costs $36. This down-to-earth approach to life extends to her casual, accessible style, balancing their luxurious lifestyle with touches of everyday charm. The Obama's philanthropic footprint. From 2009 to 2015, the Obama didn't just spend, he also gave. And generously so, with a whopping $1.1 million going to various charities. Children's organizations received more than half of his donations. He and his wife also supported causes from African-American communities to veterans, disaster relief, homelessness, housing, and health. Notably, Barack donated all post-tax profits from his children's book, Of The I Sing, amounting to $392,000 to scholarships for children of wounded and fallen soldiers. In 2015 alone, they donated about 15% of their income, totaling over $64,000 to 34 charities. The most significant donation came in 2009 when Barack gave away his entire $1.4 million Nobel Peace Prize award to various charities. Last but not least, it's evident that Barack Obama's life after the presidency are a blend of earning with expertise and spending with style, all while maintaining a heart for giving back. From the commanding heights of power to the serene vistas of luxury retreats, and from the spotlight of global stages to the quiet acts of charity, Barack Obama's post-presidential life is a testament to living fully, generously, and with undeniable flair. And that wraps up today's video. What did you think? We'd love to hear your thoughts. 
so please drop them in the comment section below. A huge thank you for spending your time with us today. Your support means everything. We can't wait to see you in our next video. Until then, we're sending you our best wishes. Stay tuned, stay curious, and as always, thank you for watching.